itself, which is about uh, the size of a packet of cigarettes, very light, little aluminium case. Looking at it from this end, you've got two connectors, one for the GPS antenna, one for the mobile phone antenna. You've got a SIM card holder, you've got an SD slot, you've got another slot for a microphone, or in fact that might be the microphone that side, and you've got a connector for USB. USB leads not included, um, however, should you get one to fit, I will have a look, it's a, I don't know what, what sort it is, but it's very small. There's some software on a disc which I've not tried yet, and that, I believe, enables you to configure it um, using your laptop rather than having to send SMS messages to configure it. On this side you've got an on-off switch and an LED. If I click it, it will actually light. There we go. So there's a backup battery in there as well. You've got the connector for the cables and you've got another accessory connector for something not included which can detect uh, impact. Um, not sure what will happen if it did. So that's the box itself. Included as well as a little microphone is a pretty standard sort of um, GPS antenna and this antenna is for the mobile network. As well as all of that, a huge amount of spaghetti. Now this is your spaghetti wiring harness. Black and red are for power and having looked at the book this is the little book that comes with it, which is written in Chinglish. But having written, looked at the book, that's pretty much all we need to connect to be able to get the thing to work initially. The rest of the wires, now there is a wiring diagram, very small, I've printed it out and blown it up, is here. What it enables you to do is to connect um, to your car and it will then become a featured alarm system. Um, not really very excited about things it can do, they're all a bit scary really, especially this bit. This is a 40 amp vehicle relay as part of the loom. This enables you to connect it to the vehicle uh, fuel pump or in fact the ignition system and you can send a text to disable your vehicle. Uh, I, certainly something I, I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't trust my vehicle going at 70 mile an hour down the motorway to a little box that could uh, turn it off. Um, but you can connect it in uh, if, uh, if you so desire. There's this little gadget here which is a panic switch. Press and hold it for a few seconds and it will send a text to up to five telephones to say that uh, an SOS situation and it will give the Latin long of where it is. Can't really see the value of that either to be honest. I mean, it, it is very small and virtually discreet, but I mean, if you were in a situation, you just take your mobile phone out of your pocket and you would ring somebody anyway, I imagine. Um, the rest of the wires are for this one, it says, the orange one, to connect to your vehicle horn. Well, I wouldn't connect that to my vehicle horn for a start, but I guess through a relay or an interface, it enables you to sound the horn remotely by sending a text or as part of the alarm features it will sound, sound the horn. Uh, there's also wires for detecting the door being opened. Now you would, I imagine, connect this to your uh, lamp inside your, your vehicle. Um, there's, there's one for detecting a negative going and one for detecting a positive going, so you'd use one of those. Um, they're called door triggers. There's a white one for accessory. Now that will be how it decides the vehicle has the ignition has been turned and there is a one left for the fuel sensor now no idea why you'd want to connect to that the idea it says according to the book is that if the vehicle's running low on fuel it can send you a text well if you're the driver you should know that and what's the point of receiving a text if you're not the driver to say the fuel's running low so most of these I'm going to cut off and not use um, and I'm just going to use it in the, in the most basic of modes. Now the most basic of modes, you will ring it, it will hang up and send a text back to the number that called it with the location. So that is the locator mode. You can also send it text and give it various commands. The commands are such that you can tell it to send you a text when the vehicle starts moving, when the vehicle ex exceeds a certain speed, um, what they call a stockade, where 
it will text you when the vehicle leaves a predefined area. And, and there's more. You can ask it for its status. Um, you can even ask it for the fuel level, had you connected all of this stuff up. But uh, all of this is going to require quite a hefty installation and quite a bit of trust in a little, uh, in a little box. So as I say, I won't be doing any of that. Um, thinking elsewhere of what you could do with it, because you can send it a text and command it to do uh, a feature like sound the horn, you could use this elsewhere. So you could connect the horn wire, which you know this basically it's just a wire that will uh, um, drop to negative and conduct or go positive. I haven't found out yet. Um, you could connect that, for instance, to your garage door if you've got electric doors. Um, why you'd want to open your garage door from 100 miles away, who knows, but you could. It could be a backup way uh, if you've lost your keys and stage keys, you could uh, get into your house. Password protected, so you can tell it which phones, maximum of five, to respond to. It'll ignore all the rest. Um, and also you can set a password, so no, all commands are ignored unless you send a password. Every, every time you send a text, it will reply with a text, so there's going to be a cost there unless you buy a SIM with 5,000 texts per month included, the, the, the cost is certainly going to rack up. Also, you can use data mode, where as if your SIM has got a data allowance, it will continuously track and give location. You can tell it to do that via a text message. That could be useful. It talks about a website you should go to, which I've had a look at, and it's in Chinese and it says demo and you need to register. So there may be more information about that on the little disc. Um, however, that's as far as I got with that. Elsewhere, you've got a microphone. Now the microphone, you can plug into it and you can send a text once again to tell it not to work as a tracker, but as a monitor. So when you phone it up, what happens is it just allows you to listen to wherever the microphone is. So if that's in your vehicle, you could listen to the robbers criticising your CD collection. But, I mean, if your vehicle's stolen, I think I'd rather track it than use that. You might think of another reason to be able to use that, not vehicle related. You may want to uh, work for MI5 and plant it somewhere and be able to phone and listen in. Who knows? This little bag contains a standard GPS antenna. This little bag contains a standard uh, mobile phone external antenna. So if you want to be discreet, you're going to have to hide that, whereas it's still going to be able to see the satellites. You're going to have to hide that. However, it's still got to, uh, I, I doubt, uh, you know, it's going to have to be somewhere visible. Um, you can hide that quite easily. And you've got to wire all of this in and, and wire that in. Now, I'm going to experiment with it and try using it in its most basic of modes, i.e. I'll phone it up and it will tell me where it is, i.e. a locator. Now there is um, a power consumption, I've yet to find out, I'm going to find out. Um, the book says about 45 milliamps, continuous. 45 milliamps isn't much at all, however it's uh, a quarter or a fifth of what uh, a lamp would use. And you wouldn't leave your interior light on, so even though this uses less, you've got to consider, and we'll find out what power it uses surely, you've got to consider, well, it would flatten your battery after a while or take a toll on it if you don't use your vehicle very often. So perhaps um, it might be more, more useful if you place it somewhere where you can actually turn it on and off with a switch, you know, re reach under or reach through and turn the switch so that you, when you don't want it, you can turn it off. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to power it up and we're going to see what happens. Okay, it's a short while later and what I've done in the meantime is I've put a pay-as-you-go SIM into the slot and uh, I've powered it up. Now the first thing I've noticed um, is the power consumption. If I bring that you can probably see it's the region of 100 milliamps. That's quite a lot. That kind of consumption would take a toll on your battery. It's twice as much as um, what was uh, said uh, um, that I read, and I'm not sure where I read it, just 45. I would be concerned about something drawing that much power from my battery permanently. However, there's not an off switch. 
But it's not an on off switch. It doesn't actually turn the unit on or off. What that uh, switch does is turn the backup battery on and off. So you can see I can flip it back and forwards. It really doesn't make any difference to the power consumption or the operation of the unit. So my initial idea of being able to turn that, use that to turn it on and off um, isn't very clever. So you would have to, I guess, if you wanted it to be an occasional use device, is have the power for it connected directly to the accessory supply of your car so that uh, when you turn your ignition on it works, when you turn your ignition off it stops working. However, what good is that? If you want to locate your car when you're not sure where it is, um, that only because the unit would only become active um, in the event that your vehicle was being driven. So a little bit disappointed with with that actually, because it doesn't give it. I'd have to have a conceal another switch somewhere to turn the unit on and off, so that uh, when I park it up outside my house where I know it's safe, um, I can turn the whole thing off. However, if I wanted it parked up in a public car park, I may want it on. That switch there isn't suitable, so you'd have to have another one. Another thing to consider, and I say the power consumption means I wouldn't want it to be left on permanently. The lamp that you can see is flashing red and it's green solid. When you first turn it on, it's solid red. Once it's got a connection with the mobile network, it starts to flash red. Once it gets a GPS lo location or lock, it, the green background comes on as well. Now it took a long time to actually get a GPS lock and that's with the GPS antenna stretching across the table here and out the window. I'll give it its due, it could well be because it's the first time, but I'm, I'm saying 15-20 minutes it actually took. Maybe because it's the first time, when I turn it on and off maybe it'd be a lot quicker. But bear in mind that thing has got to be able to see the sky when it's in your car. So how does it, how does it work? Well, what I'll do... I'm going to phone it up, this is the most simple location mode, I'm going to phone it up, this is, this is a, a smartphone, um, iPhone, the reason I'm using this is because it's got uh, a Google Maps application. So I'm going to phone it up, let me just find the number, uh, there we go, it's now ringing, it's a... and what will happen? You won't see any difference on the device itself, but it will just answer the call and it just says it's busy. So we'll cancel that, we'll come out of that. What's going to happen now is, there you go, is it, you get a, immediately you get a text back. Um, if I view that text, uh, because it's a smartphone, there's the text, the text actually tells me a Latin long location, a speed, a time and date and it also says the power is on, the door is off and the accessory is off. I guess that means that the, the door connection has not been um, set and it doesn't think the accessories are connected. Strangely enough I have connected, no I haven't connected the accessory wire, big pardon, my mistake, I haven't connected the accessory wire. So if I click on the link what will happen now is this is quite nice, Google Maps will open and it will bring up a map of where the unit is which is quite good. So another little experiment we're going to do with it, I've wired up the relay. The relay is in fact a normally closed relay so that normally it's not energised at all um, and your vehicle will run normally. What will happen is, is if the device tries to stop the vehicle, it will energise the relay, which will break the circuit, thus disabling your car. To energise that relay, you, you <coughs> issue the command stop, which I'm going to do now, as a text, and the password, which the default password is 123456, I haven't changed that. Stop, 123456, so I'm going to send that text now, there we go, sending, it's sent. Ah. Did you hear the relay click? The relay has clicked. The car has been disabled, if that's the intention. I've had a text reply that says, stop engine succeeded. So that feature, I wouldn't recommend it with a vehicle, but 
can be possibly used for something else like my original idea of opening a, a garage door or something like that. For my last experiment I'm going to try the monitor mode so what I'm going to do is send it a text let's have a look um, and the text I'm going to send is monitor and then the password one two three four five six in this case I'm going to send that which went not sure if I get a reply or not Oh yeah, I've got a reply text that says monitor OK. What should happen now is if I actually phone it, let me get to my contacts, if I call it, according to the book, the microphone should be live and I can listen in. So let's try that. Yes? yes. It's out. Yes. Testing, testing. Yes. Hello? Hello. So it answered immediately. Oh, let me turn that off. It answered the call immediately, uh, basically on the first ring, and just went straight to microphone. Um, not sure as if I've got a use for that either, but um, it certainly works. So in conclusion, what do I think of it? The answer is, in, for me, not a lot. To fit that into the car, bear in mind how much current it consumes, bear in mind having to mount the antennas, there's two of them, a lot of wiring, a lot of fiddling involved. I wouldn't use the alarm features, so all I'd be using it for is for finding out where my vehicle is and possibly tracking it if, it, uh, if I needed to. I could do that with an Android phone and a suitable application. I could buy an Android phone for a similar price and I uh, it would be far more simpler to wire into the vehicle or even conceal in the vehicle and having done that you've still got a telephone in there as well that you could use so what else could I do with it well it's an interesting gadget you could make something out of it I've, I've demonstrated you can phone it up and listen to the mic so um, a bit of MI5 spy bug type stuff you could do with that you can text it to fire a relay so that could be uh, used for something like, uh, my only example was opening a garage door from 100 miles away, not sure why I'd want to do that, but you could remotely control a device with a, you know, that only requires a single switch command. But the GPS features, despite the fact that I've demonstrated they work, I certainly wouldn't be using those in a vehicle, it's too cumbersome an installation for something that could be done a different way.